Hi, my name is Phil. I like talking about politics and in this video I'd like to discuss the way the wheels are falling off the Tory campaign wagon just one week into election year as the latest flurry of bad news for Sunak is that the Covid inquiry is going to go public with an interim report before the summer with a focus on how austerity and Brexit planning damaged our pandemic response. If Sunak goes for an autumn election, then it will be published before then. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel. So the bad news just keeps coming for Rishi Sunak. This weekend alone, he's been faced with a resignation, which draws attention to his betrayal of net zero promises. His pensions minister being investigated for misappropriating public money for party political purposes. And now the news that an interim report will be published from the COVID inquiry. The COVID inquiry really is a potential banana skin for the Tories. Nobody can deny that pretty much everything the government gets to touch is worse off now than when they won their last election. Give me a majority, said Boris Johnson, and I can deal with all these problems. It'll all be marvellous. Only when people gave that narcissistic Etonian psychopath a large majority, everything got much worse while he sat back scoffing cheese and wine. Funny that. But the Tories talk about how Covid derailed their plans, how it couldn't have been foreseen at the time of the election. And it's a powerful line for some voters because Covid would have derailed a lot of genuine plans. Absolutely. How could it not? Massively affected the global economy as well as the British economy. So it would be a serious problem if a report were to be published showing that the government sabotaged our preparations and response to the pandemic because austerity had weakened our preparations and prioritising Brexit unnecessarily was making a serious response to COVID impossible. Remember, the uh, the EU said we don't have to rush with these trade and cooperation uh, agreement negotiations. We can wait till after COVID, if you like. And Boris Johnson said, no, I am prioritising leaving the single market and customs union over COVID. That's what he said. And that's what he did. And of course, this report is now going to be released. The COVID inquiry itself is so wide ranging, needs to interview so many witnesses, consider so much documentary evidence that it will take years. It's going to be more than another year before we even get onto PPE procurement, which is arguably the most corrupt and reprehensible aspect of the entire scandal. Once the inquiry is over, it will then take time to produce the final report. We're talking years. But we need to learn the lessons now, not for political reasons, but because we could be faced with another pandemic at any time. It's known that our readiness for a future pandemic is actually worse than it was for COVID in 2020. We didn't even build up systems in hindsight. We've made ourselves weaker. This is like an old tribal lord having their castle invaded and after only just repelling the invaders, deciding rather than to rebuild their ramparts even thicker, higher and with an extra layer of defence, no, no, they're actually going to tear down their own walls and just hope for the best in future. So the inquiry has decided to publish interim reports in order that we can start to learn lessons sooner rather than later, rather than just waiting for years and having one ginormous report at the end. The idea is so that we can start to build our pandemic ramparts back up before it's too late. However, although this is the rationale, it is inevitably political as well. There is a strong political dimension because the Tories weren't actually doing their best. They weren't simply making mistakes due to the emergency nature of the situation. They were engaged in deliberate malfeasance not speculation. We know that the VIP lane has been described as unlawful by the High Court. We know that some of what the government were telling the public at the time were lies. We've seen much of the evidence which the COVID inquiry has been examining over the last year. According to a report in The Guardian, the report is going to blame austerity and Brexit planning for failing to heed the recommendations in previous pandemic readiness exercises. Now, to my mind, even making sure that the public know that we had these exercises to prepare could be powerful. There's a lot of people don't really know. Too many members of the public think the pandemic was unexpected, that we were caught on the hop. No, it was expected. The Tories right back to 2010 officially labelled a global pandemic as the number one threat to the nation. And they carried out exercises such as Cygnus to get ourselves ready. The government just didn't act on the findings. And if the report is to be published before summer, well, that presumably means by mid-June, doesn't it? 
Now, if Sunak calls the election for May the 2nd, as I'm sure he's trying to do right now, he will dodge it in the most serious sense. It's not that the report won't cause political problems. After the election, the Conservatives will be engaging in an, uh, an incredibly self-destructive campaign of blaming each other. And the report could still add to a sense of chaos in the party, delaying the time it takes them to start rebuilding an opposition. But that would all happen anyway. And it would be far worse for them if the report is published before the election, because then it might impact voter behaviour for the election. If Sunak cannot get the polls narrowing significantly before the end of March, in order to call that May 2nd election, if his tax rises presented as tax cuts don't do the trick, then I think there's every chance he will aim to give May a miss and go for November. I really do think there's a lot of people saying, oh, it's going to be November, oh, it's going to be May. My view remains that the Conservatives want to engineer a situation where they can go for the election in May, but they, they're not committed to it. They're giving themselves a runoff to, to November, October, November, if it goes badly for them this spring. But apart from all the other problems that this would pose, all the other serious risks he would be taking, it will now be a decision that means having to deal with a COVID inquiry report. Could be worse, mind you. Because the COVID inquiry has completed two modules so far, but this interim report will only cover the first of them, which is entitled Resilience and Preparedness. The second was, of course, decision making and political governance. Imagine that report coming out before the election. However, this is not going to be published until next year, after the election, no matter when it's held. But that's not much of a silver lining for the Tories. They will still have to face the report that attacks their austerity and their Brexit planning and priorities. And consider that Sunak has to make his decision about an election on May the 2nd by the end of March, something like March 28th, something like that. The implication of this reporting is that the inquiry report still won't have been published then. So the specific contents will be an unknown quantity. It'll be difficult for Tory strategists to gauge just how damaging it's going to be. We also don't know how the mainstream media will react. The Tories know that most of it will do the Tories a favour in misdirecting the public if possible, but it's not always possible. Like, will it be another party gate, for example, where the Tory client media can try and distract, can try and deflect the damage, but ultimately they'll struggle. If it's published in June, consider the context. It comes at a time when the political news is starting to dial down. Assuming Sunak is going for an autumn election, he, he's, he's missed out May, he's not called the election for May, so it looks like it's going to be autumn. It's going to be published after the excitement of the local and mayoral elections has died down. It's going to be published as Parliament is farting about with the tail end of bills getting ready for the summer recess. And as more attention is being paid to the American presidential race, and Britons are treated to the unhinged rantings of the Tories' best mate, Donald Trump, who at the moment you only really know what he's playing at if you're sort of, uh, if you're following on social media. You know, he's mostly playing his trade on Truth Social, so we have to get people leaking the bits onto Twitter. If you're out of that loop, you have no idea what he's up to at the moment, other than facing a load of legal strife. Summer tends to be a slowish period for political news stories, so anything serious does tend to get coverage. Rishi Sunak may either need the orange one to be incredibly entertaining on a daily basis or the biggest dead cat you've ever seen in your life. Because this is just one more very high stakes risk to the Tories delaying the election beyond May. They, without that report being published, they won't be able to gauge how damaging it is. They won't be able to gauge whether or not their client media will be able to sort of cover for them as they have been doing through much of the COVID inquiry. They don't really know they can try and manage it, but they don't really know it's an unknown quantity and it will be an unknown quantity in their decision making. Do we go for May or do we go for November? And we may find there are more reasons yet to come. Like in the last months of Boris Johnson, I kept trying to make the point that the, the, the Tory MPs who were thinking, well, we'll just wait for this to blow over, wait for this scandal to blow over, get a period of stability. Boris Johnson's charisma will start winning voters over again. And I just kept saying it's not going to happen. Not only had Partygate really let the public down in a way that wasn't going to, to blow over, but with Boris Johnson, the scandals never end. And so it proved to be. Well, the same thing's happening now. It's not that with Rishi Sunak, the scandals never end. The scandals tend not to stick to him personally. 
but his party is still generating them. We've had multiple examples of very bad news for Sunak and the Tories just in the past week. And consider from the from last week, this time last week, it, the first week of election year, the Conservatives and Labour are going to attempt to stage manage everything in fine detail. They're going to make mishaps. But for the Tories, it all went to shit immediately. Imagine the scandal still to come. And the longer the Tories leave the election, the more skeletons come tumbling out of their closet. And this COVID inquiry report could be packed with a few of them. But there we are. Those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. I hope you found the video interesting. If you did, please click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, the join button for memberships. And until next time, I'll see you later.